Let me try this. Anyang Haseo. And uh, as they would say it in my country, Kuzangpo, and uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, I, I think the afternoon sessions are usually quite difficult, especially since there was a lovely, uh, uh, I think, delicacies that are provided by, uh, you know, the organizers. And I hope that I can keep your attention for the duration of my presentation. Uh, uh, and uh, to ensure that I don't actually put you all off to sleep, I've uh, tried to make my presentation as short as possible. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, if we can go to the ne oh, this is okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, I'll quickly touch uh, upon. Uh, 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 Bhutan, J just a slight introduction as Bhutan is a very small country and probably not very well known. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a brief, brief background on the uh, agencies that are involved in e-government in my country. Uh, uh, I'll touch on the policies and strategies that, uh, that we are focusing on uh, and mention the legal, legal and regulatory frameworks uh, that we have in place and uh, mention about the, uh, the strategic uh, e-government initiatives that, that are ongoing right now. And uh, lastly, uh, since we're talking uh, comparatively in terms of uh, e-government in small and uh, big countries, I would uh, mention, uh, I think, uh, from the perspective of uh, Bhutan being a small country, some of the opportunities that uh, we believe uh, we have and some of the challenges that that we need to overcome. Uh, Bhutan is a very small country. Uh, it has a total land area of about uh, slightly over 38,000 square kilometers. Uh, we're basically a mountainous country. Uh, we're located uh, in the eastern Himalayas. Sorry, I don't have a graphical representation that would have made more sense. But uh, if you recall, uh, the uh, the distinguished speaker from Nepal. There was a present. There was a there was a map, and uh, we're very close to Nepal. We're bordered by China in the south, and India. I mean, uh, China in the north, and uh, India in the south. Uh, we have a population of uh, a little more than Maldives, uh, 634,000, but very 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 small. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, 20 districts, I mean, we're divided into 20 districts and we have uh, uh, 205 blocks, blocks of villages, which we call Zonghags and Georgs, respectively. Uh, the, uh, the thing to note here is that the average population density in, in Bhutan is only about 16 people per square kilometer. And uh, uh, the current tele density is 57% uh, and the internet usage is, is less than 14%. Um, uh, in terms of the agencies that are involved uh, in the, deploy, uh, the development and deployment of e-government in Bhutan, uh, uh, mainly the Ministry of Information and Communications uh, spearheads the development of ICT uh, uh, in Bhutan in terms of infrastructure, in terms of application development, etc. And uh, while we don't have uh, any uh, CIO uh, in place, uh, we have uh, more technical units uh, called the ICT units that are, uh, that are established in all, uh, all the different uh, organizations uh, to uh, help with their uh, IT uh, endeavors as well as to coordinate uh, ICT development. Uh, in addition to the Ministry of Information and Communications, we also have uh, specifically uh, uh, an informal body that was established to spearhead uh, the development and deployment of online uh, government to citizen services. And uh, this body is called the G2C Project Office. Uh, it, uh, since it is a cross-sectorial, uh, 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 it, re it requires cross-sectorial cross cooperation. Uh, this body reports directly to the 
uh, committee of secretaries, the uh, ministries in my government is uh, headed by uh, the chief executive who is called the secretary and these secretaries form the committee of uh, secretaries and uh, the G2C uh, project office also uh, pro gives uh, regular updates to the prime minister's office as well. Uh, the present uh, structure uh, in terms of uh, e-government uh, is being, I mean, in term, uh, the present structure that is in place for the development of e-government is being uh, currently reviewed uh, because of the inherent uh, deficiencies that we see. Uh, to talk about the policies and strategies, uh, I, I, I will not read the policy, uh, the vision statement that we have, uh, but I would like to highlight that uh, Bhutan uh, looks at uh, uh, development through different eyes rather than focusing on gross, gross national product. Uh, we look at gross national happiness. Uh, while I will not uh, go into details of that because that would probably take a long time, uh, I would like to point your attention towards uh, the four pillars that we uh, focus on and uh, that is uh, good governance, uh, the con conservation of the environment, sustainable and equitable socio-economic development and preservation and promotion of culture. Uh, we believe that uh, ICTs uh, can contribute towards the development of all, all four of these pillars and uh, therefore it, has, it is a priority sector for, this, for, for Bhutan. Uh, by the way, happiness is uh, in the context of Bhutan is akin to contentment rather than the fleeting uh, happiness that uh, you know uh, that we normally are used to. Uh, in terms of policies and strategies to further elaborate on the ICT uh, policies and strategies, uh, Bhutan focuses on uh, four main areas. Uh, mainly, uh, it is to use ICTs for the online delivery of public services, uh, to provide a reliable, reliable ICT infrastructure for all, to develop uh, ena enabling regulations, and also to build local capacity. Uh, uh, specifically, in terms of uh, uh, online services, uh, some of the uh, things that we have done is to identify uh, the most commonly availed uh, services uh, by the citizens and uh, set a target of reducing uh, the amount of time to process these services uh, by an average of 75% uh, relative to the time it would take uh, use, using uh, the conventional way of delivering the services. Um, in terms of providing ICT infrastructure for all, uh, uh, Bhutan is predominantly uh, rural in the sense 70, 70 percent, uh, approximately 70 percent of the population live in rural Bhutan and uh, therefore uh, to provide uh, infrastructure access to all uh, is, uh, is an important uh, uh, endeavor and uh, we, uh, we would like to achieve that through the use of uh, community centers. Uh, we. Uh, I, I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, since Bhutan is a very small, small country, uh, we have a lack of human capacity, and uh, especially in, 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 in ICTs. And uh, uh, we are in the process of carrying out pointed uh, training programs to develop uh, capacities in this area. Uh, in terms of the legal and regulatory framework, uh, uh, we have a single act which was uh, enacted in 2006. This is called the Bhutan Information Communication and Media Act. Uh, it, be, it empowers uh, the Ministry of Information and Communications as the lead agency for e-government and 
it uh, also goes on, goes on to legalize uh, the use of data messages and uh, uh, the use of electronic signatures. Uh, however, uh, uh, this single act is, uh, is found to be lacking and is currently under review uh, and also uh, to be enhanced uh, subsequently. Uh, some of the issues that, that have arisen are privacy and security and uh, other, other issues as well. Uh, some of the strategic uh, initiatives uh, that the country is focusing on right now is uh, firstly the development of a national backbone uh, network uh, for the entire country. Uh, we are in the process of developing uh, OPGW, that's uh, optical ground wire, uh, to 18 of the 20 districts uh, that, I that, uh, that exist in the country and uh, this, is, uh, this will be completed by June of 2011 and uh, a high-speed uh, wireless point-to-point uh, -point, uh, network will be uh, deployed for the remaining two districts and uh, we will be also taking fiber optics through ADSS to uh, the 205 blocks uh, groups of villages by the end of 2013. Uh, uh, specifically, in terms of the G2C initiative, uh, we have identified 110 of the most commonly availed uh, G2C services, and uh, we have uh, uh, re-engineered, or as we like to call it, leaned uh, uh, most of these services by over 75%. Uh, 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 in terms of the amount of time it would take to process these services or, or these approvals. And uh, so far, uh, 20 of these services have been deployed. Uh, uh, 45 of them are, have already been uh, tendered out for development, and the remaining are, st are, are still being uh, re-engineered. Uh, Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, community centers will be used for uh, providing uh, access to the rural communities. I men also mentioned earlier that we have 205 uh, blocks of villages uh, uh, in the country. Uh, we will be providing uh, a community center in each of these 205 blocks. Uh, uh, so far, the construction of uh, around 70 of them are ongoing. Uh, and to ensure uh, that uh, they, there is a reduction uh, of 75% uh, uh, in terms of processing these services, uh, we are also uh, making sure that uh, we try and reuse uh, existing uh, databases, uh, including our citizen ID database, our vehicle registration database, our land records database, as well as our business uh, ID uh, database. Uh, to ensure that uh, these services are not uh, only provided online, but to also ensure that they are delivered uh, as per the service level agreements that have been signed by each of the agencies, uh, we are also putting in place uh, a voice of customer cell uh, which will uh, basically collect feedback from, uh, from the citizens and uh, this will be monitored directly by the Prime Minister's office himself. Uh, to build uh, uh, capacity uh, in the country, uh, uh, we are also undertaking uh, a massive uh, uh, training, uh, pointed training exercise, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, 7, 000, uh, over 7,000 leaders and uh, 7,000 teachers are being uh, trained on ICT, uh, s uh, specifically uh, focused on ICT for development. And uh, uh, this may not sound as a, like a big, big number, but uh, relative to the population, we are talking about 50%, uh, approximately 50% of the, of the civil service. Uh, and we are also, uh, uh, through, the, through the same project, we are also establishing uh, computer labs in 168 uh, higher secondary schools. 
uh, in over 20 institutes uh, and we are also establishing in the community centers uh, 131 uh, learning uh, unsupervised learning stations for the uh, the youth to uh, get acquainted with uh, computers and uh, use use those for uh, learning uh, to talk about opportunities and constraints uh, I, I must uh, first qualify that uh, these are by no means generalized uh, 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 opportunities for small countries, but rather uh, Bhutan's uh, opportunities that we feel uh, are available for Bhutan from Bhutan's perspective. Uh, we believe that uh, our small size uh, enables us uh, reduce complexities uh, in projects as as you can see that uh, we already have a, a national uh, ID system in place since we have a very small population the deployment of this uh, throughout the country uh, took less than three years uh, we also believe that uh, uh, our small size enables us uh, reduce complexities in terms of integration uh, and this is primarily because uh, our local governments uh, do not have uh, any uh, information systems and uh, most information systems are located centrally in the central government. Uh, we believe that uh, the small uh, size reduces uh, complexities of change management. Uh, one example I can quote is that uh, we we de we developed a, a civil service management system, uh, and uh, we transitioned from a manual uh, system to uh, a web-based online system uh, with less than uh, three months of training. Uh, and uh, we believe that it's e easier to raise awareness. Uh, we uh, to. To elaborate on that, we uh, have recently initiated uh, a health uh, help center. Uh, basically, it 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 enables citizens to call for emergency response uh, in terms of ambulance and also to get basic uh, health uh, uh, health advice from uh, from medical practitioners. And uh, since I mentioned uh, most of our po population is uh, rurally located and uh, inaccessible uh, but have access to telecommunications, uh, they are able to uh, call, uh, you know, to get uh, access to these services. Uh, the majority of the population actually uh, became aware of this uh, and started using it actively after just two newspaper articles and uh, basically word of mouth. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, to highlight some of the challenges that we face, uh, uh, since, uh, since we are a very small country, uh, delivering uh, sustainable and affordable access uh, is uh, extremely difficult. Uh, providing connectivity to sp uh, sparsely populated villages where uh, which co constitute less than 50 households uh, becomes extremely uh, difficult in terms of uh, providing sus uh, providing uh, ac affordable access in a sustainable manner uh, and uh, of course uh, we also have an extremely difficult challenge in terms of high cost of uh, international bandwidth uh, because we lack economies of scale and uh, uh, being a short, I mean, being a very uh, small country, I highlighted, uh, I touched on this earlier. Human capacity is a is a is a huge challenge. Uh, there is a lack of ICT professionals uh, as well as leaders in the government. Uh, the our local private sector is 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 is, is a fledgling, and I think this was also highlighted by the distinguished speaker from Maldives that uh, most. Uh, Multinational uh, presence is uh, temporary only for uh, projects, and that uh, extreme uh, that affects the sustainability of our projects. Uh, and that ends my presentation. Thank you.